To give you a little comparison on throttles, uh, I don't have a Digitrex throttle, but uh, the gray throttle in my right hand here is a lens throttle. Uh, there's a lot of similarities that go on between the Digitrex and the lens. The reason that I also like the NCE for uh, as far as ease of operation is, as you can see on the, the gray throttle here, there are far fewer buttons. Well, what does this mean? It means that if you want to control the turnout on the NCE throttle, you simply select the accessory or the turnout number by pushing the select accessory button and then entering the number of the turnout. On the lens system, you have to remember to select a turnout, you have to depress the F for function key, you have to depress the number 5 which selects accessory turnouts and then control your turnout but you have to remember the F and the 5. If you want to change a momentum setting on the track, you have to remember F7 on the, on the lens system. On the NCE system, you simply can press the program key and it'll ask you which setting you want to change by of the full dis, the display screen. Ask you the question that you need to answer in order to make some of the changes. To uh, increase or decrease speed on the lens system, you're stuck with uh, simply touching an increase button or a decrease button and it'll either jump one or multiple steps at a time. With the NCE display, you have the choice of a fast uh, step button, uh, which you can hold down and it'll step quickly uh, as preset number of steps at a time, or it has a wheel that you can dial to increase or decrease the speed. If you want to change the direction of the train, there's a direction button on this. You have to know that the button on the top center of the LG uh, of the lens screen is for changing direction. Uh, there's an automatic momentum button. There are other uh, uh, features. There's a recall button so that you can have five or six different engine numbers in here and to get them back it's not necessary to enter them in. You simply hit the recall and they'll display one at a time on the screen and tell you which engine you're working with. With the lens system, you're basically limited to two at a time. That's just a few of the features that make the NCE system significantly friendlier from an end user point of view to operate. One of the main advantages of a DCC system on your layout is you can simply select a locomotive number. In this case, I've selected locomotive 653, which is our little truck here. Once you've selected that locomotive, even though there are 10 other locomotives on the same piece of track, you can individually control this locomotive. For example, once I've selected it, if I want to turn the headlight on, I simply push the headlight button and the headlight comes on. If I want to turn it off, I push the headlight button again. If I want to turn on the flashing light on top of the cab, that's function one on this particular uh, engine. And you can use your own convention for this. But as you can see, I turned the headlight uh, or the blinking light on top, the warning light on. I can turn on, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it or not, but I can turn on the light inside the cab. Here I'm turning it on and off. I'll leave it on. I can turn the headlight on. Then I can tell it with the hand throttle. To, to have just this engine start to move and no other engine. So with DCC you can have multiple trains on the same layout, individually command each one of them. If I want it to change direction I simply push the direction key. Right? It'll slow to a stop and start backing up. You notice that I can speed it up a little bit and when I say change direction it doesn't instantly change direction. It slows to a stop first, reverses direction, turns the headlights back on, and advance. <coughs> All of this is done automatically. I'll change the direction one more time. I have it back.
I have it back up. When we get near the end of the track, I want to demonstrate now the unique feature of most decoders and DCC engines that allow you to do some automatic control. So I'll change the direction again. As the train starts forward, I'm not going to touch anything on the, th the throttle. But I have a little switch down here that's going to switch the track power from DCC to ordinary DC. And when I do, the train will slow to a stop. It did not cut the power. You can see that the headlight, the warning light, and the cab light are still functional. All I have to do to start this train moving again is to throw, switch the power going to the track from old-fashioned analog DC back to DCC. And I do that by throwing this toggle and the train will slowly go back up to speed. If I want to reverse direction now, I simply press the reverse direction on the throttle and the train will reverse direction. If I want to stop it, I simply can either speed it up or slow it down to a stop. Reverse direction again. Now this would work if I had three different trains on the track as long as I keep addressing each one by their address. This was engine number 653. I have another engine over here, 1064. Different engine numbers can all be on the same track. You don't have to have any isolated blocks. If you do want to have a block isolated for braking control of the signal, you can do that with DCC. It's a lot simpler uh, operation than the other old block analog systems with multiple transformers. I just demonstrated to you how you can switch the track power to DC to cause this engine to break. It's a simple way of doing it. You can either have a separate, separate transformer for DCC to activate the decoder inside the locomotive to tell it you want to break. If you don't want to invest in a separate transformer, you can get from BitSwitch what I call a DC brake generator. You can build one yourself if you want. It's a simple bridge rectifier with a toggle switch on it that allows you to run the track power either through the bridge rectifier which converts it to DC going to the track or not. All right, That's the second method. Most decoders will break using that method and it's the least expensive simplest method to use. Another method for braking, causing the uh, trains to come to a stop, is by sending a set speed zero DCC bit packet. It's a universal set speed zero packet. So anytime that signal goes out, any sections of the track and the layout that receive that signal, regardless of the engine number that's in that section of track, that engine will slow to a stop. Set speed zero works on everyone's decoders that I'm aware of to date except MRC works on everyone else's decoders and the advantage of it is that you don't have to worry about whose decoder is in your locomotive if you have multiple decoders. The disadvantage is when you use a set speed zero you also have to add a, a, an auxiliary booster to your DCC system. You have to have one extra booster that will control braking for the entire layout. You may have multiple sections, so you don't need boosters for every brake section, but you need one booster to control multiple brake sections that's dedicated for set speed zero. The advantage of set speed zero, as I said, is it'll work on anybody's decoder except MRC. The disadvantage is the extra expense. There is